Here we are again, the Autosportradio.com 2020 show. We are, as we have been for the last three or four weeks, at the Grand King Ray Shop at 8155 Crawfordsville Avenue in Indianapolis. And if you ever get a, a Crawfordsville Road, if you ever get a chance, once the uh, 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 seclusion is is lifted, you got to come by here. It's a it's a great place. You'll enjoy it. Got a lot of interesting cars and uh, things, and they got a, quite a collection of. Uh, Evil can evil stuff because Evil was at one time a sponsor of Grand King, more or less. So anyway, today's show is presented by Honda and Honda HPD, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the NTT IndyCar Series, SVRA, and McGilvery's Pub and Speedway. Founded in 1993 to spearhead Honda's entry into IndyCar racing, Honda Performance Development has overseen successful racing efforts at all levels of the sport from karting and quarter midgets to IndyCar and prototype sports cars. HPD offers race engine competition parts for professional, amateur, and entry-level racers. For more information about HPD and the company's racing product lines, please visit hpd.honda.com. And uh, everybody's favorite doctor's appointment is a dentist. Well, I can make it a good one for you. The Indy Dental Group, Indy 500 veteran Dr. Jack Miller and his wife, Dr. Liz Lewis, have the highest rated dental clinic in the state. So give them a call, make an appointment. You'll be glad you did, trust me. 317-846-6125. And I got to thank Brian from Speedway Cable TV who edits these interviews and puts them up for us. I thank him and Bill Pease. And I also have to thank my my uh, IT guru, Ted Howlett, who knows how to do this. I haven't figured it out yet. You got trouble with your computer? And do what I've done, a lot of people are doing now. Go to the A plus affordable computer doctor, Dr. Steve Lewis. He is a doctor, he makes house calls. Got a problem? Call him. Number 317 3280766. Uh, if you want to know why these guys and gals love driving Indy cars, why not take a ride in the two seater from the Indy Racing Experience? You can go online to indyracingexperience.com, find a date that'll work for you. And uh, in the promo box, put DK1, you get a 50% discount. Or you can call Shonda at the office. Her number is 317-243-7171. Getting time to renew your insurance for your home, your car, or your commercial property? Do what many of us have done. Call Mike Pardee at VP Insurance. He's located at 5004 West 16th Street in Speedway. Give him a call. Tell him what you need, and he'll help you. Number is 317 and if you're a vintage car fan, you want to keep up with what's going on in the uh, Trans Am and the vintage car world, you got to go to svra.com and click on Speed Tour and subscribe to Speed Tour. Great magazine, first class, great pictures, great stories, and some of the cars that you knew as a kid and some of the drivers are both on the track running. So check it out, svra.com and subscribe to Speed Tour. And if you're interested in having a vintage car or you have one and need it restored, one stop, Grand King Shops. Uh, they can do anything. Behind me is the 78 Rice Lightning Offie that uh, Larry Rice drove. It is for sale if you're interested in it. And then one in front of me, we've talked about the Olsen ID Eagle also. But if you have one or, uh, and need it restored, give them a call. Talk to them about it. The number here is 317-820-3595. And if you want to tour the shop when things open, call them up and set up the time again. 317-820-3595. 3595. My guest today is uh, a very accomplished driver. He's got a, a good history starting out and is currently driving for uh, Chip Ganassi Racing. And of course, I'm talking about Marcus Erickson. Marcus, thanks for being here today. Enjoy talking with you, I'm sure. Thanks for having me. Um, you started out in karting. What got you into racing? They didn't have uh, McDonald's at the time. You thought, well, I can't get a job there. I'll go drive <laughs> race cars. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> uh, no, my, uh, actually, I'm, I'm not from a racing family. So uh, I was never racing in my family before me. So it was not like a normal sport for me uh, to take up. But there was a rental car center that was close to my home growing up. And I think I... I was uh, telling my dad to go there too many times, so he eventually brought me there, and, and I got hooked, and I think this was when I was about eight years old, and we went there for one summer, and then after that summer, uh, yeah, my dad was bored of 
buying me rental card hours and we, he bought me a, a real go-kart instead and got me started. It's amazing how many guys get think it'd be fun to drive a cart and you get hooked on a sport and here they go. And it's off and running. And yeah. you've run in numerous series and won many titles, uh, races and championships uh, in Europe. Uh, as you started going up the ladder, what did your fa your parents say? Is it a good idea or can't you get find something else to do? It's less dangerous? Yeah, I mean, I think to be honest, my dad loved it from <laughs> from when I started. You know, he was uh, he got really into it, and he was my mechanic for all my years in in go karts, pretty much. So he was very much involved and 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 liked it. My mom, she also liked it, but she got a bit more worried and and you know <laughs> nervous when I was driving. Uh, so, but I think by now they are very much used to it. So they, yeah, I think they they still get nervous, but they, yeah, they they love following me in my career do they get to come over here and watch you race from time to time or are they here all season no they come for a few races every year so last year my my dad was in st pete for the first race and then both my mom and dad came for the 500 and then they both also came for the finale in laguna seca and uh yeah I, i'm sure this year when we eventually get going hopefully you can come to a few races uh, as well I understand you got a brother that's in, was in, or is continuing racing as well. Yeah, I actually have two younger brothers, but uh, only one of them is into racing, yeah. and that's the youngest one. And uh, he's uh, raced the last three years in the UK in uh, Formula Four and Formula Three, and won races there. But for this year, he's taking the step back to to Scandinavia, and he's now racing or plan to race in the Scandinavian Porsche uh, Carrera Cup Championship. Uh, but also there because of the corona, it's, the season is postponed, but hopefully at some point it gets started. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's fun, you know, I'm, I'm trying to teach him as much as I can and then we speak a lot and he has a lot of talent. So let's, let's see where he, where he goes. Maybe he comes to America at some point as well. Uh, it's, it's amazing how, uh, you know, your career caught the attention i know you ran in the, you ran in the all japan formula three championship and you won it in your uh, debut year so you you had a name for yourself in europe how in the world did sam schmidt find you uh yeah i was uh like i said i did most of my career in europe and then but at the same time whilst i was doing that i was always having an eye on america and american racing uh, growing up i remember watching kenny brack uh, on tv with my dad and all the kart races and stuff was on live TV in Sweden. So I remember watching that and I always, yeah, I was looking at, uh, at IndyCar whilst being in Europe. So when, uh, when my contract in Formula One didn't get renewed, I, I definitely, I said straight away to my management, I want to look at IndyCar and see what opportunities there are there. And I actually made the first call to Sam Schmidt. I got this number from, some other racing friends and I knew obviously the unfortunate crash for, for Robbie. Uh, I knew there was a, uh, a seat opening up there and I gave Sam a call and then sort of expressed my interest and straight away I think he, he was impressed with the, the way I approached him and then we got it going there and then eventually got a deal together. So that was, uh, that was how it worked out. Uh, you spent four years in Formula One totally different cars. Uh, d d what's the big diff biggest difference between driving Formula One and the atmosphere and driving IndyCar in the atmosphere here? I think the biggest thing is that in IndyCar, anyone can win, you know, and, and that's the, the great thing with IndyCar is that it's more a driver's and engineer's championship, whereas Formula One is so much about what car and what team you're in, and the differences between the big teams and the smaller teams are very big, so... I think that's what I love as a driver within the car. And then I think also one of the big differences is that in the car, you know, goes every type of track, small and twisted street courses, nice and open road courses, super speedways, short, short ovals, uh, you know, you get everything. So I think as a driver, you need to be a complete driver to be successful in the car because it's such a wide uh, variety of, of tracks we go to. So that's just some of the things that's different. I think atmosphere-wise, in IndyCar, it's a bit more open. Obviously, the paddock is open for everyone to walk around, for fans. And also within the drivers, I think the drivers in IndyCar is a bit more 
friends with each other. <laughs> uh, whereas in Formula One, it's a bit more everyone is going on with their own business. And it's a bit different that way, I would say, between the two paddocks um, that I've found so far. Do you like the openness of IndyCar where the fans and you're, you're gaining fans rapidly can come up and ask for a picture, ask for an autograph? Uh, do you like that approach rather? I know when Formula One was here, I had credentials but couldn't go anywhere because you couldn't get in. Uh, I know yeah, a sponsor I, that never met the driver. They, they never met him, but they put in, I think, 30 or 40 million, which in Formula One is nothing. Whereas here, you can, yeah, meet, the driver. You can meet everybody. It's, it's completely different, like you say. And I think, you know, the IndyCar way is, um, is better because in the end of the day, we, we need to take care of our fans. Without fans, we are nothing. And I think that's, uh, that's very, very important. And the way IndyCar does it is it's great because I think if you go as a fan to an IndyCar race, you can really feel uh, like you're part of it. You know, you can see the cars, you can meet the drivers, you can, you know, talk to the drivers, you get an autograph, you get a selfie. And it's just, I think the, the, the whole experience as a fan in IndyCar is, is the right way to do it. Um, then, you know, Formula One, it's, uh, I don't know if it's possible or not. They've chosen a very different way and it's sort of always been like that and then work in that direction. But I think they are changing it a little bit step by step to try and be a bit more open as well, which I think is the right way, especially these days when, you know, every sport has so much um, competition with, with the people to get the fans to, to come and watch. And I think it's important to really make everything take care of them. And I think that's something IndyCar is doing well. I find it interesting in Formula One, you can have two drivers on a team and, and they dislike each other. They don't, sometimes they don't even talk to each other. It's that competitive in your own team, which has got to be difficult to survive in, I would think. Did you have that problem in the four years you were there? Yeah, maybe not as bad, but I think it is true, like you say, in, in Formula One, because because it's so much about what car you're in, everyone puts so much focus on the intra-team battles, and, and you know everyone is just focusing a lot on that, uh, whereas it's an in the car, because everyone has the same cars, it's more that teammates get along better and then work more together to try and be as competitive as possible, so I think... In, in IndyCar, that makes it a bit more friendly within the teams. Whereas in, in, in F1, it's like your team is your biggest uh, enemy and you always want to beat your <laughs> teammate, which is a bit, yeah, it's a bit of a strange situation. Do you, uh, how, how different are the t cars? How different is Formula One car from an IndyCar to drive? It's very different these days. I think IndyCar, the last couple of years, has gone the opposite direction to to formula one so in formula one they've added more and more downforce making the cars very very complex whereas in the car is going to be a different direction to take off downforce makes the car a bit more difficult to control you know sliding around a lot more and uh, uh, that makes it the car is very different di different to drive i mean in the car today is it's a handful i tell you that it's always going sideways or on the steering and it's always a lot of work to control it where it's a Formula One is really, really stuck to the ground. So it's very different field to drive. Uh, also the power steering that Formula One has compared to IndyCar makes it also very different uh, feeling wise. So I, I would say they are very different to drive these days. I would say that for like a one lap, if you have a empty track and you're just gonna go out for like a lap or two, I would, I would go out with a Formula One car today because they're so impressive in the way the cornering speeds they have. But to go racing, the IndyCar is better every day of the week because the way you can race these IndyCars is just amazing. And the way, you know, you can race people wheel to wheel is just so much fun. So I, I love that winning the IndyCar. Uh, it, it, what was it like the first time you got on a high-speed oval? I, I assume you hadn't run ovals until you came here. I didn't have any experience of it. So I, <laughs> I didn't know what to think. Uh, but I always, like, I always looked at the ovals and thought, this looks fun, you know. I, I've always been a big fan of high speed, uh, high speed corners and, you know, high speed tracks. So I was always eager to try ovals and I always thought that ovals is something that would suit me and my driving style. Uh, but I remember I had my first test, it was in Texas. Uh, and, and that was, uh, yeah, it was crazy. I was uh, so much adrenaline pumping and, you know, I was 
pretty nervous, but uh, it was such a cool feeling. And to drive uh, these cars on the super speedways are is uh, an incredible feeling and such a rush. And I love it personally. I love it. I, I love the ovals. I think they're so much fun, especially the racing on the ovals. It's just something else. You know, it's so different to anything else in this world. And I think it's, it's so much fun. Well, I've, I've said a thousand and one times that I think if you win a race or, or in the championship run in, in, in Indy cars, the, the best drivers in the world, because you have to, as you said, you got to run short ovals, large ovals, high speed street courses, short street courses. You've got to be a master at all of them in order to win and win a championship. So I think the best drivers in the world, in my opinion, are in IndyCar. Yeah, I agree. And I think, like I say, you need to be the most complete driver to win or be in the top uh, in IndyCar. And I think that's unique for this championship, which makes it such a special and such a great championship. Yeah, well, my only main objection to IndyCar is I wish that everybody didn't have the same car, but it makes it competitive. And then the driver come, makes a really, in my opinion, makes a big difference. Yeah, hundred percent. It's a uh, it's a driver and engineers championship these days, and uh, I think that's um, it's very interesting. You know, the, the thing that I get kind of taken aback by is when they say the the uh, sponsorship money that some of these teams have. I mean, they got hundred, two hundred million dollars in sponsorship. Of course, they have to build their own cars, build all, you know everything is is built there as opposed to what we do. But w when you get a hundred million dollar sponsorship if you had 50 million dollars in indycar they say speed costs money more speed costs more money how fast you want to go 50 million bucks you go pretty quick <laughs> yeah good point good point <laughs> uh the sim racing that has been going on how do you enjoy have you done a lot of that or have you just gotten into it since uh i racing and indycar got together i'm brand new to it to be honest i i've never been into any of this sim racing before so uh, yeah, it's been a new experience for me to to take part in that, but it's been fun, you know. I think in the in the car did a great job to sort of embrace the situation and, and put something out there for fans, and then you know to get the drivers and us to interact with the fans through through this i racing challenge in this very difficult times that we all live in. So uh, I think that was really it's been a great in, initiative and. It's been a lot of fun as well. Like I, I, you know, I've got really into it, and you know, we involved the the teams and the engineers in putting the strategy for you, and we had the spotters doing the spotting on the ovals. So it's gotten really, really serious, man, and and it's been fun, and I've had some good runs as well. So uh, I've enjoyed it. Are you running? There's a race I think uh, this Saturday, the uh, Indianapolis 500. I think it's at Indianapolis, a 500 mile race. And there's, uh, as of yesterday, I heard there were 60 some entries. Are you part of that? Uh, no, I, I haven't, I, I haven't thought about that one yet. So, uh, no. yeah. I think they had practice yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. They qualify Friday uh, and maybe. I believe they run Sunday or Saturday. And it's going to be a 500 mile race. Oh, wow. And I've talked to the guys that have been in the simulator and they say, you know, when we get done with this, I'm tired. It, it's <laughs> not yeah. easy. You think you sit in no, a chair no, and you, you just drive and it's not as easy as it looks. No, no, you get completely soaked in sweat because it's so much concentration and then you have all the force through the steering as well. So it's a, it's a workout, that's for sure. Well, I, I have been impressed with it uh, to the point where I, I just really noticed this past weekend, the Saturday race, the, the mirrors in the cars, I guess you guys can see them, but the in-car camera sometimes gets to it where you can see in the rear view mirror, you can see the cars behind you. Good yeah. grief, how in the world do they do that? Yeah, they make it realistic these days. It's impressive. How have you acclimated to living in America? Do you like it here? And how different is it from, from Sweden? It's pretty different, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, I, I like it. I, I used to live, last year I lived downtown. Uh, now I moved up to the north side of the city, up to Carmel. So oh. um, I, I like it. I really enjoy it. You know, it's uh, it's an easy country to live in. Everything is very... You know, um, everything is there, you know, everything you need and, and people are very friendly and, and, and welcoming. So, yeah, I've had a great time and, you know, enjoy being here. Obviously, these these last one and a half months with everything that's going on, <laughs> it's, it's a bit more difficult, but same in the whole world pretty much. But, uh, yeah, in general, I've really enjoyed living here. Were you surprised when uh, Sam and McLaren got together? 
and they made the change and you and James were supposedly going to be there and all of a sudden it was goodbye. Did that surprise you that uh, they let you go? I don't know. It's, you know, I've been long enough in this sport to know that things change quickly. Uh, I think it would have been nice to continue to build on what we started last year because I felt like, yes, the results maybe in the end was not what we wanted, but there was a lot of positives there. And I think the way I interacted with the team was really good. So we had some really good building. But then, yeah, I, he I heard all these rumors about McLaren for quite some time. And then when it happened, I sort of, I could see that they wanted to sort of change things and do a bit of a fresh start. And I could understand that McLaren wanted to come in and sort of put their touch on it. So I, when the McLaren thing happened, I wasn't surprised to see that me and, and James got to, to leave. Uh, I think without the McLaren thing, I'm, I'm pretty certain that we would have, yeah, you know, still had a big chance to stay there. But in the end of the day, you know, it, it all worked out really good for me. I got this great uh, super opportunity with Chip Ganassi Racing, and I feel so proud to to have that chance to drive for, for one of the best teams in the world, you know, and, and that's, a, that's a great honor. So I'm just super excited for that. So I think in the end, it all worked out for, for the best. Were you surprised or did you have some conversations going with Chip and joining his team, or were you surprised when you got the call? No, I, I, you know, when this all happened with uh, with Sam and and, uh, and McLaren and SPM, uh, uh, you know, me and my management, we reached out and looked at different opportunities. And when there, when we understood it was a chance to to get a place in Ganassi, we were sort of going all all in for that. And and um, yeah, I was just super happy when it all came together and and we got the deal together and. You know, to get a great new sponsor in Husky Chocolates uh, as well, it's been it's been really really good to 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 have the Husky Chocolates car out there in in the number eight for 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 this year. So, yeah, I'm I'm just super happy and, and proud of it, and can't wait to get out there and go <laughs> racing for real. You know, your sponsor is a chocolate company. Yeah, chocolate what, drink company. Really, is it an American company or a Swedish company? No, it is a it's a Swedish-born company, but they have the main market in America, so oh. that's why it makes good sense to be here in IndyCar, you know, and promote. So uh, I'm I'm gonna bring some samples to the race, that's for sure, for everyone to try. Good. Remember what I look like. I might be standing there one of these days just to give it a whirl. You're, you're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's it's amazing to me how how guys like like yourself and like most of the drivers get. You know, they, they they see karting or they see short track racing, open wheel racing, and they get, you know, I'd like to try that. And lo and behold, eight or nine or 10 years later, here they are at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, or in your case, you got the Formula One fairly quickly, it seems to me. Was your goal, yeah, I mean, should, did you want to go to Formula One? Was that where you had your eye starting out? That's where I want to go. Yeah, I think as a kid growing up, I was always sort of watching Formula One with my dad and it was always my dream to become a Formula One driver, and uh, you know I'm I'm super proud and, and you know uh, that I did that whole journey and became a Formula One driver, and I'm very happy with the years I did there. But like I said, I always had my eyes on American racing and Indy cars as well because I've always been tempted to try it, and I've always had a dream to try that. And also, I've always wanted to do the Indy 500 because for me that's the the most special race out there. So. Uh, yeah, that's why, you know, I'm really happy how my career has gone so far. You know, I've managed to do my years in F1 and now I'm in IndyCar and one of the best teams and then have a great opportunity. So, yeah, I uh, can't complain so far. Uh, do fans recognize you when you go out to dinner, which you can't do now, but when you go out and you're out, do people recognize you now? Are they starting to know who Marcus Erickson is? Yeah, every now and then here in Indi Indianapolis, there's people coming up to me and, you know, you can tell that it's a racing city, you know, and, and people do recognize you when you're out and about uh, more and more, uh, let's say. Uh, but yeah, hopefully after a few wins and then more podiums and stuff, it will be even more. Yeah, just think of be sitting in a restaurant having dinner and people coming up when you got a, ha a fork full of food and they want your autograph or pose for a picture. <laughs> Yeah, but usually people are, are you know, behaving and, and not doing that in the middle of your meal. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I know what you're saying. But, yeah, I, I've always had great experience with fans here in, in America. 
Well, the, the, time, the one time, I can say the last time, but the only time I've had you as a guest on Autosport when we were at McGilvery's, I got numerous requests, even now, which is why I called. When are you going to get Marcus back? Good guy, interesting to listen to. So I pestered you, and you have the kind of personality that I think is good for motorsports. It, Thank you. You appreciate are a dedicated that. racer, but you also appreciate the fact that without fans, we're nobody. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know. I I I I like to say, you know, that we're 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 you know we're the same all of us, and we need to take care of each other. And I think uh, for us, uh, we are the drivers, but without the fans, we we have nothing. So it's it's very important. What's it like working with Mike Hull? <laughs> it's been good so far, you know. Uh, getting to know him more and more. Obviously, now haven't had as much contact with him the last couple of months because of this whole Corona thing. But yeah, Mike is a great guy, and he has some some great stories and you know he's been around forever it feels like so yeah he's a he's a great asset to the team and you know it's um, uh, yeah it's really really nice working with him do you do you go to the shop when you can uh, since you're living up in that area now anyway it's not so far to go yeah i mean over the winter i was there at least a couple of days a week just hanging out with the with the guys and you know getting to know everyone and i, I believe in you know building that strong relationship between um, people are, are, are key, you know? So I, I always try, that's why I want to live close to the shop. It was the same last year that I can sort of go in. And even if you don't have anything specific to do that day, you have to come in and have a cup of coffee and, you know, have a catch up with your mechanics or whoever in the, in the shop. I think these small things really make the difference. And, and I try and, and do that as, uh, as much as possible. Like to me, I work for a race team, and the team always enjoyed it when the drivers would come in and spend some time, because you know they get the realize what you're capable of, and they want to give you a car because if you you can drive and win it, and they don't give you the car to win, and then it falls back on them. So, I think uh, the re relationship with the driver and the team is is crucial, in my opinion. I 100% agree, and that's always been my sort of mindset to to really build a team around me you know with people that they want to work with me you know and they don't want to just be there because they have to they want to be there because they care for me and, and i care for them so that's how i've always been working and always will be working i think that's the way forward well i can tell you there's probably 50 or 60 fans that are just dying and chomping at the bit for the june race to show up at texas and I know you guys. Me are too. Ready to go. Me too. Oh, yeah. I, my fingers are like, I, I want to go now. You know, I want to go racing and can't wait. And I would love to start in Texas as well. It's like one of the coolest races last year. I was just, my mind was blown after that race. It was just so cool and such a rush to race here in Texas under the lights. So to kick off the season there would be, would be really, really cool and really special. So I really, really hope we, we do that. Have you acquired a favorite track yet? It sounds like you like Texas, but have you acquired, is there a track that fits your driving style? And people don't understand when I say, you got a driving style. What do you mean? They sit in the car and they turn left or they turn left and right. <laughs> There's a driving style to everybody. Each one of you guys are uh, different. I'm going to tell you my favorite track from last year, and you're not going to believe it because everyone starts laughing almost when I say it. But my favorite track, which I can't wait to get back to, is Iowa Speedway. Yeah. <laughs> wait till you, wait till you get to Richmond. That's gonna be another. Yeah, I, I I hear it's good, but yeah, for me Iowa was the most fun track because the racing was great. I was super fast there, and unless I had that pit incident in the end, I would have been on the podium there. So uh, I really loved Iowa, and I can't wait to get back there. I thought it was such a fun little track, and all the bumps there makes it so much character. And I think pretty much the whole night during the race, I was side by side with someone, so that was pretty exciting as well. I think people will find it strange that a guy coming from Formula One with street and road courses had the best time and enjoyable at a, the shortest track in the in the series. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I know. That's that's a funny thing. Like no one believes it, but it's it's true. I loved it there. Well, we wish you nothing but the best. I appreciate you taking the time. I'd rather relatively short notice to chat with us. We'd love to have you in front of uh, a live audience at McGilvery's, but that's not happening for a while yet. So. Uh, you were agreeable to come here and take the time, and I appreciate it. And uh, the fans will be watching this; will be enjoying listening to you. Thanks for having me, and I will I will come back uh, soon. I promise.
All right, thank you. And don't forget, you're going to see me at your garage door to see how that chocolate is. <laughs> I, I will not remember. I will not forget that. Don't, okay. Don't you worry. <laughs> I appreciate. It. Thanks for your time. And thank good you. luck in good luck in the coming season. We'll, we'll look for you, Texas. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. My guest has been Marcus Erickson from Sweden, who's driving this year for Chip Ganassi Racing, and uh, he did well last year and this year full season. He's been to most of the tracks already, so that'll be fun to see. The newest one will be, of course, Richmond, but um, we'll look forward to it. Thanks again to, to him. We enjoy talking to him. Uh, we will be back again. We have a couple of guests lined up, so until next time, this is Don Kay saying thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Goodbye.